Our blood is actually a connective tissue and what that means is it consists not only of individual cells but it also contains an extracellular matrix that is found surrounding those cells. Now in order to study the composition of our blood we can use the process of centrifugation. So we take a test tube, we place the blood inside that test tube and we place it inside our centrifuge machine and what the machine does is it spins our test tube at very high velocities and that uses, that separates the things found inside our blood by density. And so after this process we basically see two different layers form. The bottom layer found at the bottom of the test tube consists of our cells and the upper portion of the test tube consists of the blood plasma. So let's begin by discussing what the blood plasma is, what is found inside the blood plasma and what the function of our blood plasma is. Now blood plasma is actually the extracellular matrix that we spoke of earlier and it makes up about 55% of the volume of our blood. Now the blood plasma is a fluid like substance that consists of many different things. So let's discuss some of the things that we normally find inside our blood. So probably the thing that predominates, not probably, but definitely, the thing that predominates inside our blood is water. In fact, water is the major solvent of our cells and water is also used by the proteolytic enzymes to hydrolyze different types of molecules and that's exactly why this makes up as much as 95% of the volume of our blood plasma. So number two we also find different types of proteins such as for example albumin. Alb albumin is the protein that carries fatty acids and cholesterol molecules inside the blood plasma. We also have proteins such as our fibrinogen which is basically involved in a blood clotting process and we have immunoglobulins which are the antibodies that are used by our immune system. Number three, we also find nutrients such as amino acids, sugars, as well as fatty acids. And these are the nutrients that are required by the cell to basically make ATP, make proteins and fats. Number four, we find a balance of electrolytes. We have sodium, we have chloride, we have calcium, magnesium, bicarbonate and other ions. And these are used not only to regulate the pH, but they are also used to actually control the osmotic pressure inside our blood. Number five, we also find waste products. So when the cells carry out their processes, they produce waste products such as for example urea, lactic acid and our uh, carbon dioxide and these things are released into our blood and they end up in their specific location. For example, lactic acid ends up in the liver, our carbon dioxide ends up inside our lungs and urea ends up in our kidneys. Now what about number six, hormones. So hormones are those biological molecules that travel inside our blood from one point to a different point in the body and they are basically used to regulate many different types of processes. Two examples of hormones is ADH, the antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone. So these are the major constituents that are found in the blood plasma. Now we can conclude that the blood plasma functions as a fluid like matrix that is responsible for moving, for transporting different types of substances, nutrients, waste products, minerals, vitamins and so forth from one point in the body to a different point of the body. And they are also used to regulate the composition of the nutrients, molecules and ions of the matrix of different cells found inside our body. Now what about the cells? So earlier we said that our blood is a connective tissue. It consists of the matrix known as the blood plasma and it also contains individual cells.
So the question is, what types of cells are found inside our blood? Well, notice that if the blood plasma makes up 55% of the volume of blood that uh, implies that the remaining 45% makes up our cells. So the cells make up 45% of the blood volume of our blood. Now, what types of cells are found inside our blood? Well, we have red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. We have bl uh, white blood cells, also known as leukocytes. And we have our thrombocytes, also known as platelets. And all these three different types of cells arise from the same exact stem cell found in the bone marrow of our bone, known as the hematopoietic stem cell. So let's briefly discuss the function of each one of these cells and let's begin with the red blood cell also known as erythrocyte. Now recall that oxygen exists in its diatomic form. So in one oxygen molecule we have two individual oxygen atoms that are double bonded by nonpolar bond and that means oxygen is nonpolar. Now, because water is the, uh, is the main constituent of blood plasma, that makes our blood aqueous. And that implies that oxygen, because it is nonpolar, it does not actually easily dissolve in the aqueous blood plasma. And so what happens, or what needs to happen is, when oxygen gets into our lungs, it's the, re uh, it's the red blood cells that actually pick up that oxygen in the lungs and carry carry it to the cells of our body that need that oxygen to basically produce ATP for energy. Now, red blood cells are actually very specialized. They have very interesting structures, very interesting properties that make them very efficient for carrying oxygen. So let's discuss what these properties are. Number one is their shape. They have a biconcave shape and that not only increases the surface area of the red blood cells and makes them very efficient in exchanging oxygen, but it also allows them to actually squeeze and travel through the really tiny capillaries. So as the red blood cells with the biconcave shape squeeze through the capillaries surrounding our tissues and cells, we basically exchange that oxygen for carbon dioxide. Now, the next important structure point of our red blood cell is the fact that they do not actually have any organelles. So they don't have nuclei, they don't have mitochondria or any other organelle for that matter. Now, why is that important? What is the relevance of that property? Well, because they don't have any organelles, they have a lot of free space inside the red blood cells and that makes them perfect for storing as much oxygen as possible. Now, the protein that actually carries the oxygen inside the red blood cell is a protein known as hemoglobin and hemoglobin can carry up to four different oxygen molecules. Now inside a single red blood cell we have about 280 million of these individual hemoglobin proteins and because hemoglobin carries four oxygens Four multiplied by that gives us over 1 billion of these oxygen molecules is carried in a single red blood cell. So red blood cells are very, very efficient at their job. They can carry a lot of these, many of these oxygen molecules. Now, another important point that I should make is because red blood cells don't actually have any mitochondria, that implies they don't actually use cellular respiration. So that means they do not use up the oxygen supply that is found within our cell. And this is another byproduct of the fact that they do not have any organelle. They are extremely specialized to carry out one purpose, and that is to actually carry those oxygen molecules from one cell to a different cell in our body. Now, let's move on to leukocytes. Now, 
our red blood cells make up the predominant portion of the cells of our blood. Leukocytes only make up about 1% of the cells of our, uh, of our blood, but when we have some type of infection, this number can greatly increase. And this is because leukocytes are actually our immune cells that protect us from bacterial and viral agents. So we have different types of leukocytes and we'll focus on these different types and their functions when we'll discuss our immune system. For example, we have monocytes, we have lymphocytes, and we also have mast cells and other leukocyte types. Now let's move on to our thrombocytes, also known as platelets. Now the ratio of thrombocytes to red blood cells in our blood is about 1 to 10. So we have more of these red blood cells than our platelets. Now just like these red blood cells, platelets also do not have any nuclei, but they are smaller than these red blood cells and they have, they have other organelles. Now, our platelets actually function in the blood clotting process. So they travel along our blood vessels until they come to a cut or a, uh, or a, um, a hole in the endolithium of our blood vessel. And then they stick to that hole and they initiate a process. They release chemicals that initiate the blood, uh, the blood clotting process. And we'll discuss this process in much more detail when we'll discuss the immune system and the blood clotting cascade. So these are the three different types of cells that are found within our blood. And along with these cell types, we also have the blood plasma inside the blood, which is basically the extracellular matrix that is found around these cells.